to reach out to a ghost and or a spirit and invite them to come back to us. Is it possible to reach out to a ghost or a spirit? So this would be someone you know? Or no. In no, general? It, nobody we know. It's just the spirit we used to have, I believe. You, you used to have in your home? Or? Mm -hmm. In a different home. In a, um, we live in Nevada now, but we used to live in Texas. Okay. And is the spirit in your home now? It used to be. It used to be in the, in the house in Texas. We haven't... Um, I haven't it noticed it since then. It didn't and follow we, we moved from Texas in 2005. Okay. Let me see. So these pictures are Kareen and your daughter? Yes. What? Tell me your daughter's name? Hennessy. Hennessy. <laughs> pictures are cute. <laughs> um, okay, so... So this ghost was in the house that Hennessy grew up in, right? Right, until she was about three and a half. Mm -hmm. And how did you how did you know this ghost was there? Um, when I would rock her in the chair in her nursery, it would breathe on my forehead. And then at some point, I just had a visual of, of him. I didn't ever see him, but I can tell you to a T what he looked like. And it's nobody that I've ever known or met or am related to or or my husband or anything. So we don't know who it was, but I felt like he was in there to protect Hennessy when she was a baby and would, when would stay in her room with her. Okay, give me just a minute. Let me, let me go through these pictures. That home is actually, the problem is the home you were in. How long were you in that home for? Five years. That home has, is surrounded by or has, bodies buried are you by a was it by a, a graveyard or something um not that i know of but there's one direction from that house that i never went so i don't know what was over there okay so this house in particular i mean i don't use <laughs> i don't use the word haunt like usually use the word haunted because it sounds very silly and goofy but the house had drew to it many different types of spirits regularly it's like i mean i'm gonna i'm not gonna say it was literally built on an old graveyard but it feels like it was lit your home was built on a graveyard that's how that's how many spirits how much energy how many displaced um beings that weren't ready to pass over, wouldn't pass over, that were stuck, um, that's how many were there. Is that it feels like it was built on a, on a cemetery. May not have literally been, but that's how, how much action and activity was happening in that home. This man in particular was actually um, not stuck, not a typical, so typically when you have ghosts and spirits, um, that haunt or bother or aggravate it's because they don't want they're pissed they don't want to cross over they're not ready they're unfinished they're sad they're all these things reasons why ghosts are there and really it's our job to help spirits cross over and help them move on just like it's if you had a friend who needed help and would help that friend it's the same thing but if you aren't tuned in and connected i mean it's not a simple process it's not as simple as talking to your friend on the phone but um th th this home you had was surrounded by energy that was just so unsettled and this this spirit that was there was was actually sent there because it had to your daughter was supposed to um live and was supposed to live unharmed and the only way that was going to happen was if some another entity was sent in that could manage the energy in that space does that make sense yeah so he was there to, to not let other spirits um harm her yeah mess with it so um hennessy when when babies uh or for when, when a when a child is very young or, or first 
born, they're very connected to spirit. And so a baby is is like a um, antenna or radar to, to spirit and to um, the universe, to God, whatever you believe. Um, it's, and so when that baby has that vulnerability, and I don't mean vulnerability in a bad way, I mean vulnerability in a positive way, where they're very sensitive and very open, they're going to look and speak and connect with everything that they see and hear, you know, um, that's just, just like a child would, if not taught, would not think uh, to look both ways before crossing a street. They just mm -hmm. play, they just go, they just do their thing. And that's the same thing. And so this, this, in this situation, honestly, this house should be burned down. Like that house should not even <laughs> exist. Um, but in this situation, Hennessy was taken care of because you um, weren't aware of how to be of assistance. And I don't know that even if you were aware, you could have managed it yourself. And I think that um, moving was the only option um, and was inevitable. Um, this picture you sent me, this one that, that that's the front of your house? Uh-huh. Is that someone standing in the doorway? Yeah, that's my husband celebrating that it was, um, I think, snowing or it snowed. Okay, this, <laughs> is hanging out. <laughs> this is hanging out with Rick too long because I was like, oh my God, there's a ghost in the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> and I see those things all the time. And they, for me, I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> that's funny. You're like, no nothing Rick don't show the picture no one cares it's a real person <laughs> um so anyway okay question any questions or comments so far um no it, it makes sense with there's a portion of my story that I didn't put on on reddit yet because I didn't I didn't put the two together until um I had talked to somebody else about it so I I sent you a couple other pictures that really had nothing to do with her, with Hennessy's bedroom at the time. It was my bedroom. Um, but I think that they might be related, the two stories. So I don't know if you want that story yet or... Sure. The weird thing is I can't remember the timeline about it because I want to say that this happened before I realized Grandpa Ghost was around um, because it was about the same time. So when Hennessy was five months old, my husband went to Honduras for a work detail and he was going to be gone for three months and of course I was 20 years old with a brand new baby in a brand new city I didn't know anybody I'm freaking out um, and so I would call a friend of mine that lived a couple states away because her husband was in the military and deployed and so um, it was pretty soon after he left on my husband left on that detail I was on the phone with my friend and it was like one o'clock in the morning and I had every light in my bedroom on, and I had decided that that was gonna be when Hennessy was gonna move to her own room. So it was one of the first nights I had put her in her crib, um, and she did fine, but I had every light in my room on, I had my TV on, and I'm talking on the phone, and out of nowhere, this ridiculously bright light just appeared on the wall over my dresser mirror. And um, our ceilings were really high in that house and they vaulted. And so I just remember all of a sudden freaking out on the phone with my friend saying, I don't know what I'm looking at, but this bright light just got on my wall. And it slowly moved up um, where the ceiling vaulted and went up that angle. And then it just stopped and stayed there. And so we were surrounded by neighbors. There was no road behind us. And my bedroom was at the back of the house and all the windows faced the neighbor back in our backyard. And so I'm like, maybe they're having a party, maybe there are lights coming through, but all the blinds were closed. I opened them, I'm like looking out there, nobody's awake, no lights are up, curtains are closed, everything. And so I thought, okay, well maybe, even though the angle wasn't right, it was coming from the bathroom window and so I went in there, but you had to like, there was just no way the light was coming through there. The window was in the wrong place. It couldn't have bounced off the mirror. And so the light stayed there. And it was, like I said, I had every light on in my room and it was the brightest light. Um, and it stayed there for hours and I just cried. I was so scared and I didn't want to leave my room because the light was close to my door. So it was, it was gonna mean me having to run past it. 
Um, and I don't remember how it left. I just remember all of a sudden the sun was up and the light was gone. Um, and then I think it was right after that is one of the first times that I felt Grandpa Ghost breathing on my forehead in Hennessy's bedroom. So I don't know if that light was him so, at first or something else, but it scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> so Grandpa Ghost is the, the guy that I was reading, yeah? Uh-huh. Okay. And it was after you saw that light that that happened? I think so. I'm not 100% sure on that timeline, okay. but I hope that that light happened as soon as my husband left, and I know Grandpa Ghost appeared while my husband was gone for that same yeah. detail. Um, do you have a picture of your husband? I do. Can I, can you just hold it up to the screen? Um, can I see, can you go get, go get that picture of me and dad right there? Okay. What's his name? Umberto, but he goes by Bert. So that's, I don't know, oh, can you see him? Yeah. That's a cute picture of you guys. That's Thank you, right? You. Yeah, it better yes. be. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, you've got great hair. Side Thank note. Um, okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, Harder above the printer. I mean, it's, it's funny. It's because on, on one hand, it's like, to explain this is like, how do I do this? It's really obvious what's happening. Like, it's like, oh, this is so obvious, but I have to break it down so it's not obvious to you guys. I get that. Just as a um, side note, my, my husband doesn't believe in any spirits or any ghosts or anything like that. He thinks that we're both nuts, but he, he does let us entertain the idea. He just kind of rolls his eyes at us like, okay, that's <laughs> sure. Funny. You know, the fact that he allows it is very sweet of him, meaning he believes he loves you and believes you, and mm -hmm. that's important because if he rejected it, or that would be a problem. If he rejected yeah. it, if he didn't, that, that would be a problem. But he's open enough. Um, which is important because this all had to take place. And that's why a lot of it took place when he wasn't there because um, it would have been a very different experience had he been there. Um, so, so this light, there's a couple things happening. One is that light was... You have, you have, you have spirits, like we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. that haven't crossed over, that are stuck, all of that. And then you have, get ready for this, you th your husband is going to lose his shit if you tell him. <laughs> but then you have alien life forms as well. And oh no, 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 he believes in aliens. <laughs> he just doesn't believe in ghosts. How do you exactly. believe in aliens but not ghosts? <laughs> It's a you great can't pick question, and Miriam. No, <laughs> you can't pick and choose. You're telling me a little green man running around is easier to to handle than like. But honestly, yep. my yep. husband was the same way when I 17 years ago, where he was like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." I'm like, "It doesn't even make sense to me." Like, <laughs> if I hadn't experienced aliens, I would be like, "What is happening?" Yeah. Okay, that's funny. Well, <laughs> this will be easy for him to digest. Okay. Um, but there's there's a, there's like so much happening because there's these aliens, which I can't, we'll be here all day if I start channeling this information, but there's aliens that, um, just like on the planet, there's aliens that are good and bad, just like there's humans that are good and bad, just like there's spirits that are good and bad, okay? Um, so... But there's aliens that are genuinely trying to protect and save the planet. And they come and they reach out and connect to those that have the ability to make a difference on the planet and with mankind. And the hope is 
when they connect with you, you will embrace the connection, see the work that needs to be done, and follow the path that you are to be on, which only you can find. I can't find that for you, only you can find that. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that presence scared you because it was an unknown presence. It's, it, it, it was as if, um, it was as if some random human walked in your front door and just stood there and then didn't hurt you but just stood there of course it was scared the crap out of you yeah. <laughs> um, and, but, the, but the difference is the reason why you didn't move is because this energy wasn't there to stir you up and get you all riled up it was there to show you that there is something else to your existence that you need to embrace and embark on. That there is more than what you see with the eye and there's more that you, mom, are supposed to be doing with your life that involves and includes service. And those beings are beings that you should and can look to, call to, <laughs> I almost want to say report to <laughs> as far as showing you next steps, where you're supposed to go, what you are supposed to do, what it's supposed to look like. Whereas Hennessy has a very, her beings, her kind of go to our spirit, uh, spirit form, um, meaning they're not in a physical body. Like an alien is just like us, where it's a spirit in an alien body, in, in a physical body, right? But Hennessy works more with. Um, ethereal spirits that haven't chosen a body yet which is why her sensitivity level is kind of off the charts um, compared to you um, Kareen who has the ability to communicate and connect with spirits who are in body okay. um, so <laughs> you guys have a lot going on um, that is a part of your all of this is not for fun it's just like mm -hmm. the same with rick this stuff that we draw ourselves to might seem fun but it's for a reason you're doing this work you're inquiring you're talking you're asking because you it, it, there's a reason for why you're here and you're not just here to work a nine to five or just raise a child that's not why you're here i mean I, I, you can say that kind of in general for all of mankind, but mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm looking directly at you and saying, um, you're here to do more, figure it out. That's why you reached out and why we were connected. Because you needed to be told that there's work for you to be doing and you need to go out there and find out what that is and what it looks like. For some reason, I'm seeing senior citizens for you. I'm seeing... Um, uh, seniors that are ready to transition in life to pass on and somehow you're going in and supporting nurturing I don't know if you sing or you have some sort of ability um, whether it's with your hands or your voice but you have the ability to assist people in passing over and that might sound kind of like crazy like what does that look like um, I don't know that's for you to determine and it may not look that black and white, like you're not going to be knocking on doors going, hey, I'm here to help your, you know, your grandma pass over. Yeah. <laughs> you are going, although you could, but it, really it may be that you do, there's, I don't know, they keep saying something about music therapy or something that actually is created to help individuals pass on gently, safely, um, and courageously, and, and, and not to do it alone. Um, so I just I'm, I just have a question about that because <laughs> as as mean as this sounds, I'm not freaked out by old people. It's just they're I don't know. I would just prefer not to be around them. But just in March of this year, my husband and I started going to country bars because um, we're from Texas and now we live in Vegas. And so we wanted to go dancing. And of course, everybody that's out during the week is all, they're all retired. And a lot of them are in their 80s and they dance like, they're just, they get off the dance floor like no problem. Where my husband and I are like, 
<laughs> okay, hang on. <laughs> we gotta catch our breath, you know? And But it's kind of softened my stance on how I feel about the elderly because they'll take me out there to go dancing, you know? And for me, it's... And my husband, too, he's like, it's just fun for them, you know, to swing a young girl around the dance floor or whatever. Um, so, and it's all country music and that, you know, we all share the love of that. And there's a whole bunch of them. They're, like I said, they're mostly in their 70s. There's one guy that's 80. And it's just a legit normal bar that young people go to, old people go to. But that was just that kind of the crowd that we gravitated to. And we just see them on Tuesdays, Thursdays, sometimes Fridays and Saturdays. And it's all the same group. And they'll all take me out for a spin. And, you know, they're happy as can be. <laughs> That's interesting. That's, well, that that's interesting. So there's the music. There's the seniors. So there's some. You'll find it. You'll you'll find mm -hmm. it. Your um, your fear. It's important for you to always move towards your fear. Not if you're walking off a cliff, but right. mean <laughs> personal emotional fears because what you're fearing. So so for example, when that light came into your room, your fear was due to your um, inability to understand mm -hmm. who you are beyond the physical body. Um, elderly and children, I believe there's even studies done on this, both those demographics are both very connected to the spirit world because mm -hmm. one is moving closer towards it and one is just coming out of it. So, um, that fear is understandable and makes sense. But also when that light comes in, there's this fear of understanding who you are beyond the human form. Um, and you are supposed to learn that and you are supposed to educate others and share that um, and help make transitioning easier for people. It doesn't have to just be seniors, you know. Um, it, it, it could be that the message I'm getting was kind of convoluted but it could be for anyone that is needing to pass over or ready to or whatever that is so i can't find your path for you um but you can and know that what happened to you in that home are profound and they are huge experiences that shouldn't be forgotten and that should be looked at and acknowledged and utilized moving forward on who you are who you want to be and who you're supposed to grow into those experiences molded that for you um, literally beings came down and helped prep you and mold you okay so mm -hmm. don't disregard and don't diminish they they were very very big and very important um, any any questions about that or anything we talked about no and I just wanted to comment because like if for years, like I said, my husband doesn't believe in anything, and so I kind of kept everything to myself. And I told him my, you know, my stuff because I tell him everything. Um, and but I never had anybody to talk about it with until Hennessy a couple of years ago. All, got, all of a sudden, got into ghosts and scary movies, and so now she's my ghost buddy. So it's just really been like the last year and a half that I've been really open to it. You know, I've I've um, started listening to a podcast where people call in their ghost stories and. I tell her to see the interesting ones and we go watch all the scary movies and we talk and I've taken her on ghost tours and we talk about it all the time because now she's somebody I can talk to so I feel like I have all these years of pent up, you know, every now and again this memory comes where I'm like, oh yeah, this happened to me one time. Um, so I feel like it's only been the last year and a half that we've really been able to kind of dive into it and I feel like with everything you're telling me, it's going to be a lot of catch up <laughs> and, you know, and then work from there to do. And you, that's beautifully said. I think that we are all here remembering who we are as Spirit First. So we hold all the information we need, and that information comes out through meditation. Um, it comes out through um, uh, therapy if you need to clear the emotional body first to get to the spirit body. Um, and know that this intrigue with spirits and ghosts is fun and should be pursued and should be. You should have a lot of fun with it. Do it. Um, but know that, so so it's like humans are here. The ghosts that you deal with are here because they're stuck, let's say, for lack of better words, right? But then the spirit world is here, okay? So you, you're you human and you started dabbling in this ghost stuff, which is here. And I want you to go here, which is infinity, universe, God, spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Which is... Uh, 
where we come from, who we are first. And so ghosts and the intrigue is just a stepping stone to remembering who we are as spiritual beings first. And that all the information we need as far as our past, present, and future, we hold. And we can access that at any time. Um, you should follow my posts on Instagram. I, I speak to this in very small bits that are easy to digest. Um, and it just gives you food for thought and that you can take and start you know, meditating on or researching or looking or whatever that means for you. Um, uh, I'm going to email you uh, Kundalini Yoga. Um, Guru Singh, his lectures are life-changing. His work is life-changing. His mantras, his chants, his practices. Um, I'm going to send you everything that one day, and, and know that I'll send you all this information, and it might sit there for a while, and you may it may take you a day, it might take you five years, ten years. It doesn't matter. What's important is that you you open it up and you read it, and you ask your higher self to tell you when it's time for you to start to start this practice. And you'll know when. And when the time is right, it will change your life. But you don't want to do it before you're ready. And only you will know when you're ready. And you'll know because you will have the desire to to research it, look into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, anything else? Hennessy, do you have any questions? Not really. <laughs> That's fine. You will. One day. Oh, I do. I have a question. How do we get my husband to change his mind? <laughs> <laughs> How do you control the crowd of your husband? Um, that's a different story. That, that's a different chapter. Uh, um, honestly, your husband, he, he has similar attributes energetically to mine. And I will give you the best advice I wish someone would have given me, which is don't force anything on them. Yeah. They, when they see, they will start to witness things. And it will become evident for themselves. So, for example, um, you the more in tune you become, you'll start, you guys might be having conversations and you'll say something and he'll be like, how, how did you know that? And he probably won't say it out loud. He'll think it and be like, how, how did she know that? And he'll start to see you behaving differently, acting differently, speaking differently. And he's going to, next thing you know, he'll, he'll be asking questions. He'll be intrigued. Or he just won't comment anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's the beauty of it is he's open to growing and changing with you. But you can't, it, it's like me, me trying to convince someone who doesn't believe in psychic ability that I'm psychic. It will never happen, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it, even if I were to read what was in their mind verbatim, they would say, oh, you knew because of blah, 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 blah. Like, you, these people have to feel it in the gut for themselves, just like you do, right? Like, you mm -hmm. wouldn't have believed any of this if it didn't happen to you. You... You and, and, and if you had chosen to believe it, it's because your gut says it's just like anything in life when you're when you say like God, I just had this feeling, you know what I'm saying? We've all said that before. That's your intuition. That's that, you know, and your husband will start to notice things and he'll notice it from his gut because he'll know his brain can't make sense of it, you know. Like I can't make sense of what I just saw, but I feel it in my gut. And he won't he probably won't verbalize it to you. He'll just start to, his energy will start to kind of relax around the work you're doing and get it. Does, if mm -hmm. that make sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Don't, he, it's, he's okay. I would, he's okay the way he is. And he will, he will grow with you. That's all you need. That's all you need is someone to grow with you. And even if they're growing a little bit behind, and I don't mean bad or slow, I just mean, in a different place mm -hmm. as long as he continues to love you and accept you which i feel that he will it doesn't matter okay <laughs> no different than him loving a sport that you don't love yeah like he'll never get you to love it but you will honor and respect the sport because you love him right? <laughs> right you'll let him go you'll let him have fun you'll let him do all of that and yeah. you won't 
tease him, or you might tease him to have fun with him, but you won't stop him from doing it, you know? Yep. You have, you have a very good man, so. Thank you. I think so. <laughs> don't force it. Don't ruin it by forcing it down his throat. <laughs> You're gonna tell that story? Oh. Well, now you have to. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Um, this happened, actually we've been in this house here in Vegas, we only moved here about three years ago, and nothing's happened, but, um, Hennessy about a week and a half ago called us, we were out and about, and she called and said that she was laying in her bed, and she felt something tap her on the shoulder and whisper to her in the other room, and she didn't know what that meant, and of course I joked with her and said, well go in the other room and check. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know what other room because there's a lot of bedrooms here. So um, that was the first time that we, any of us, have heard or felt anything in here. Um, okay, so so once you start opening yourself up to energies, which you guys already are open to that, but now you're kind of getting even bigger. Mm -hmm. There's there's energy out there that all it wants to do is mess with people. Okay, and there's spirits that just want to be dicks and just mess with people. So, but but the beautiful thing is, is those spirits are what teach us about our psychic ability and our intuition. But you have to protect yourself from that. So it's just it's as simple as you, you know, Corinne, you're the matriarch of the family. You are the intuitive one. You are the, the, right now, you carry the power of managing the energy in that home. So you are to go and you are to get crystals, rose quartz. There's also saying like a yellow type quartz, but you'll go in whatever you're drawn to and you're gonna place it around your house and you are going to determine who is allowed to enter that home and who is not, okay? okay. And then Hennessy is gonna learn from that and she's also gonna do the same thing. What I don't want you guys doing is wasting your time on these annoying little beings that are just there to mess with people. Because that's, once you learn that your energy in your home is really important, that it stays balanced and calm and clear, you don't let that shit in. You know, okay. and you start to, you do what you, like, you'll start to find ways to energetically, visually just map out. Like right now I'm doing it because I feel that, that, that energy that was tapping her on the shoulder is, get out of here. It's, it, 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 it's like, it's like if a 10 year old knocked on your door it's like, <laughs> I want to come in and you're like, get out of here. You know, <laughs> that's kind of the same thing. It's like, dude, get out of here. No one wants you here. Go find someone else to mess with. <laughs> but that, but when you, if you allow all those energies in your home, it can mess with your marriage. It can mess with your relationships. It can mess with you because yeah. it's messing with your energetic frequency. And so it's important that you you set and visually you see this light that surrounds the home inside the home, and then it surrounds the outside of the home, and it kind of does this right when we're like vibrates and you determine who enters it and who does it and if you need the, 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 the stones which they're recommending you get the stones so that you have a mental visual of that blockage of that boundary that you have you do that and then when you have beings that come that that maybe you'll have beings that still break through because you need to learn this. This is a really important life lesson. When they break through like that, it's for you to say, you are not allowed here, you must leave. When you ask a being to leave, it has to leave. So you connect with the white light, that light that you saw, but I always say you pull light from above, you pull light from below, you just see yourself running this light, and then you say, you're not welcome here, you have to leave. And you visually see it just being pushed out. And it'll it'll leave. It'll be pushed out. And eventually that's going to be something you just do. Like you don't even realize you're doing it. You just do it. That's how you control and manage. Vegas is like a hotbed for alien energy and like spirits that haven't passed over. So you're going to have a lot more of that than I would. Um, and so that's going to be really important. But it, again, it's kind of like your you're going to college and this is your first year of college and this is your course you know of how to manage energy in your home is going to teach you how to manage someone else's energy manage energy outside of your home it's going to teach you so much it's going to blow your mind 
Um, so take that information and get those little critters out. Okay. Anything else? Actually, that's not the story I was talking about. No? Oh, God, you guys oh. got so much going on. <laughs> what happened now? It's when I said on the mom come here thing. Oh. Oh, that one freaks me out, though. <laughs> so, um, when when we moved from Texas, we moved to Arizona, and we lived there for a while before we moved to Vegas. So we moved into a house that was four and a half months old, and it had an owner previously, and they sold it to us, and they moved along. But, um, so Hennessy always slept through the night from when she was six weeks old on. She just, she's been the best kid. She always slept. She never gotten anything. She's never caused trouble. I joke with her that we got robbed of disciplining a teenager <laughs> or a kid because we never get to. Um, but anyway, so when she was three and a half, one night we put her to bed and at about midnight, I, I'm asleep and I feel her and she pushes me, pushes my arm, and I hear her say, Mommy, come here. And I didn't even open my eyes. I just said, Hennessy, go to bed. And she did it again, and I said, Hennessy, just go to bed. And then she, she, like, shoved my arm, and she's like, Mommy, come here. And I opened my eyes, and she wasn't there. And so I hit my husband, and I said, You need to come with me. We have to go check on Hennessy. And of course, he's out of a dead sleep, doesn't know what's going on. And Hennessy's room was all the way at the other end of the house. And so we run down the hallway. We go over there. Her door's closed. We open the door, and she's passed out in her bed. Like, there, there's no way that kid was just in my room. And so, but you could feel this heat in her room. And so we touch her, and she had, like, it was like 104 fever. Um, and she had not a sniffle, nothing, when we put her to bed. And she couldn't breathe and she was just struggling and so we wake her up you know we panic we put her in the bath and we're freaking out trying to give her medicine we don't know what to do we had never had a fever that high we knew that it wasn't good and my husband's like how in the hell and I said I am telling you that this kid was pushing me and telling me to wake her up and he's like no she was not she was in her bed and I'm like I don't know what to tell you <laughs> but that one that still freaks me out I don't know if that was just mother's intuition or like I said that I think that we have a connection that we share where we can just feel each other. Uh, how old was she? Three and a half. Um, uh, that is... <sighs> Again, this is just kind of simple. I mean, in my world, what she did was simple. Was she wasn't supposed to die. She wasn't supposed to fall into a coma. These are things they were saying would have happened had she not woken you up. Um, but she couldn't wake you up physically. She couldn't get up. So her spirit came and woke you up. Now, in my world, that's not that unusual. But for every, anyone else, that would be incredibly unusual. Um, and so, I mean, it's, <laughs> again, it's simple. That's what exactly what happened. Her her. Okay. So her spirit came and woke you up because her physical body was dying. Um, and I don't mean dying to scare you. I mean, like, it was, had it not been taken care of, it could have been really bad. Yeah. Um, and, but, see, Hennessy has these abilities. And so think about it. If you are, think about what it must be like. I, so for me, I grew up with the abilities that I have, right? I, see, I hear, I hear, and I feel. I've always thought, God, people who see things, that must be harsh. Like, could you imagine being a psychic and they see things all the time? Like, mm -hmm. I don't see, I feel, I hear, right? And now, that, and as you get older, your powers increase. And so I have been starting to see stuff and I'm like, oh my God, like, now I have to see stuff too. But my point is like for Hennessy to be able to do all these things that she can do, like no wonder the physical body is under stress. So you have to understand when you do, when I, like when I do this work, when I'm channeling or when I'm reading this, this is, this can put a stress and strain on the physical body. It can also invigorate the physical body because I'm running energy. I'm running light. I'm running light from God, heaven, spirit. That light is incredibly healing. But 
I'm also feeling you guys. And so it puts a strain on the physical body. And so what I'm trying to get you with Hennessy is she's able to hear intuitively. She can teletransport basically. Um, and she feels. So you can imagine that it's not surprising that the physical body is under stress, that the vertebrae isn't the way it should be, that it needs to be realigned, that epilepsy is able to live in that body, that um, whatever else exists there. So keeping that body clean, um, I'm not going to preach, but a vegan diet is really imperative for people like us because meat um, absorbs energy and it just sits in the body and so never mind what the physical harm meat does to the body energetically meat will so like for example if i ate a big piece of chicken and then i sat and read you the food that sits in the body it holds energy so all the energy that i'm channeling and feeling and using for you has to go somewhere and if i have blockages in my body it sits in the body but because I don't have blockages in my body, because my, my digestive tract and my insides are clean, fruits, vegetables, um, grains, the energy runs right through. So now, anything I'm feeling from you doesn't sit in me, it just runs right through. Because my body's clear, there's nothing to block it. Sugar also blocks it, don't be fooled. <laughs> and I have to manage sugar, <laughs> not perfect. Um, you know, so so for example, with Hennessy, if she has a digestive tract and an immune system that is super clean and super clear, when she goes into an environment that's overwhelming, her body can process that energy and that energy can run in and out, run in and out, run in and out, versus if she just ate like, you know, a big burger and bread, um, and then the energy can't run out of the body, the energy just sits there. So now she's in this environment that's already overwhelming her and she has a digestive tract that's stuck because there's food stuck in it. So when the energy runs through the body, it just sits here. It can't get past this. And so now she's physically getting sick and now she's energetically overwhelmed and she can't function. Um, you can learn more about this, about how energy runs through the body in acupuncture and chiropractic care. All of that aligns with that type of thing. So, um, it may not make a lot of sense right now, but the more you study, the more you learn, the more you ask questions, whether it's me or other people, the more it's all going to start to make sense. But what she did to you doesn't surprise me. She's a little, uh, uh, like my husband called her, she's a little alien baby. That's just what we do. <laughs> we do, we do weird shit. 